Hello. Hello there, chatterinos. How we doing? We doing okay, chatterinos. I was um, gonna be playing Dragon City anyway, and I thought that while we do this guide, we might as well just do it live, because why not? Um, because, I mean, I need to do the runner event stuff anyway. So, you know, it just it just makes sense. It just makes sense as a whole. If we just do it all at once, we go through this maze event, we do our stuff, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, that is what we are going to be jumping into immediately today uh, because we do have the new Outback Maze event that has come to the game. And so, so far I have actually spent a little bit of currency even. But either way, we are here. Everything should be fine and ready to go. Hello, hello, how are you doing? But we do have this new Outback Maze event, which uh, I've been getting a few questions on already, and a few people have been asking quite a lot of things about this new Platypus Dragon in particular, uh, because apparently some of us see Platypus and some of us don't. It's supposed to be Platypus in this Maze event. If not, I guess you're just stuck with the other one for now until Social Point either fixes it or ju they just won't bother fixing their, their colossal mess up here. Uh, but either way, this is the Platypus Dragon. He does have the time and happy elements, which is quite interesting for a dragon like this, I will say, because, I mean, why does he have time? I have no idea, but he's a weird dragon, and I love him. And in terms of the Outback Maze event itself, the best path for you to go on for most players is going to be this brown path, aka the Platypus slash Anna Conductor path. Reason being that this path has insignias of course it's got a new dragon for some of us it's got rucksacks and the other thing is that if you go through these um these paths up to getting platypus you can also get your hands on these dragon warning signs and you need these for the collection event so if you are going for event collection items you should be going for the key paths in this event and so yeah if you don't have platypus i i, I do feel sorry for you i am very sorry that you don't have him I really am. But in terms of overall costs for this event, we do have these on, say, Ditlep and Deetlist as well. Again, we've got Ditlep here, which showcases some of the costs for us here. And so Platypus, it says it's going to be total cost 6,020 maze coins, but then we need to get 4,800 coins to actually get up to Platypus. And on his path, you'll see that we have things like legendary orb chests, rucksacks, the insignias. We've got a lucky legendary chest. We've got another. We've got two dragon warning signs on the key paths. And then finally, of course, you can unlock platypus at the end. But that total cost being just over 10,000, closer to 11,000, means that from resets alone, you're not going to be unlocking the dragon just via the resets on their own. Because, I mean, if we open up the other page guide here, it does show you how many maze coins you can actually earn for the whole event. And you'll see here that it says, Outback Maze, you can earn a total of 5,400 maze coins from every reset which is like half of what we need for Platypus. So the, the thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do Runner Event. And of course, in Runner Event, we do have a decent amount of currency available in the Devil Run Runner Event. But like, I've already collected a little bit. Like, we've got 300 Maze Coins here. We've got another 400 there. We've got another 500 there. And then we've got 600. And then we've got another 1k. And then, of course, we've got the other event collection items as well. So yeah, we've got a few different ways of getting some bonus currency. So you'll need to get all of the currency from Devil Run if you want to be able to have any shot of going for Platypus and the second Dragon Warning sign at, at the very least. And on top of that, we'll probably get some ads for the maze event as well. I mean, we got runner event currency today. As you can see on my 14th and 15th ads, well, 14th ad, we would have got another potentially jackpot um i call them jackpot ads anyway because we could get up to 10 flight stamps for this one but it's not a huge jackpot or anything uh, but we could get some a decent amount from that as well but we will have to be watching all the ads for runner event to get the extra runner event currency but hopefully they do give us ads for the next two days for maze maybe we will maybe we won't get it but that is realistically going to be the main way that we can get our hands on platypus but even if you don't manage to finish the platypus path, it's still best if you are going for items realistically to go down the brown key path 
and get your hands on those insignias as well. So that is my top tip for this event. Just try and get as much currency as you can, get the currency from the runner event, and then spend it on the key path. Because the other dragons that are available, Dragoni, he's whatever, bad primary. And then we've got Alo, who is an okay primary element dragon, but their paths aren't exactly that impressive. Like, they're fine, they've got legendary orbs and some rucksacks, but you can get uh, you can get the rucksacks from the, the key paths anyway. So, no, I love you too. But yeah, I guess since we do have Outback Maze here and I've already spent all of my currency so far, as you can see, I'm currently up to the Cerberus path and then obviously we'll get the next reset's worth of currency. We'll keep going through this event here and then we'll get our Dragon Warning sign here, which again, for me right now, this is where I'm currently sitting in the Danger in the Outback event. So you'll see that we already got the apex collection finished but now we've got this one here that has heroic joker orbs legendary joker orbs that we want to go for mainly but we're only about halfway done however if we get the two warning signs from this maze event plus all the other items we will actually get enough dragon warning signs for this collection which is great because then that means that if we do gem anything we don't have to gem for the signs which is brilliant because they're normally very expensive but we may still have to gem for a couple of the hats and some of the insect repellents. It depends on whether we can get two times on some of the items and how many we collect in general. But like I said, we've got tons of runner to get doing. So we're going to be doing runner live. Will this be a video? I mean, every single stream that I do gets turned into a video automatically. So I at least want the beginning to be the regular video format. And then we can go straight into just regular stream mode. Uh, but yeah essentially that is the that is what we're going for here we just want to chill out with this runner event stuff get these pinwheels that we need for this event but at the same time we want to make sure that everyone knows what's going on in terms of these events but i personally do not buy it for a second that the social point excuse that this is some sort of beta test because if you're not aware apparently some people have platypus like myself and then others just don't have platypus and they're saying that this is some sort of beta but then why would they remove a reward or collection dragon because that's what each of these events ends up being we get four new collection dragons you know including the puzzle dragon the maze dragon and that and that's what this australian event was like you know every single other event that they've ever released but now they're just calling it a beta even though platypus isn't available for some people so they've just removed one of the rewards from this pool it makes absolutely no sense i think that it's more likely that there's been some sort of ginormous colossal explosion at social point and they've just screwed up royally maybe not maybe they are just malicious and they have absolutely no idea what they're doing uh, but i prefer to say that maybe they just did a screw up that's how i prefer to think about it because otherwise it's just like why would you do that like why would anyone be fine with accepting this when you know <laughs> literally like a week or a week and a half ago you posted a schedule which stated that platypus would be in this event and now some people don't have it 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 doesn't make any sense whatsoever i mean if you saw there was an image file um that was uploaded from some people's games uh, and it did show Anna Conductor in place of the platypus dragon. And it's like, wow, that is a very funny looking platypus dragon right there. And, you know, even though that was the case, they still put out this schedule as if, you know, there was, oh, should I, I would two times for this, but I'm not going to. Um, but at the same time, they posted in the schedule that Platypus would be coming. It makes zero sense why that's happening. So I'm sorry if you were really looking forward to Platypus and now you're not going to get it. But that's literally just... I, I don't know what to say. It's like massive, massive screw-up territory, no matter how you look at it. Either this is like the worst thought-out beta of all, of like all time, because it's just completely illogical, or they have just screwed up somewhere with someone that was supposed to put in platypus in the in the files they just didn't and they've done this screw up i prefer to say complete incompetence rather than malicious incompetence that's my stance on it anyway 
You know, I've never been a defender of these mobile games. I've always said all along that they, they have big screw-ups sometimes, and calling this a beta is absolutely not. It, it, this is not a beta. This, <laughs> this is not what constitutes a beta social point. Of all the things they've ever called a beta, this is not one of them. I don't care what they want to call it. It's absolutely not one. Anyway. <laughs> that is my stance. I'm happy that I've got Platypus just in case we do manage to get our hands on him because, you know, he's cute. He kind of looks like a duck because, you know, it's a Platypus. Um, but, you know, as a whole, because we didn't get Kanga either because we did go with the event items instead, I just want to enjoy the remaining Australian dragons as an Australian passport holder myself. Um, might as well enjoy the rest of the Australian-themed dragons that we can get. Which, have they not thought about that for the Australian players that now have been cucked if they were told, oh yeah, there's Platypus in this event, and then they just remove it for no reason? I don't know. I'm not I'm not a fan of this, this choice, personally. <laughs> no, some players just apparently will not be able to get Platypus. I, I don't know. It's, it's utterly bizarre. You need context. We all need context. There is no context <laughs> there is genuinely no context you just don't have it um again i i could say it over and over again i choose to not believe that this is through malicious intent i i really hope because this is just dumb anyway um i do hope that you are doing well with your event collection because honestly getting as many joker orbs as the jackpot can give would be insane. I mean, most of us are just gonna get like the worst rewards and by worst rewards, they're still pretty good, right? Uh, because when I get say any of the legendary ones, if I do, then we'll be able to take sinful to level 70 if we want, or we can just finish our dual perception, which is another option. Um, I'm definitely leaning towards the dual perception empowering still, but then again, if we ever want to get back into Master Arena, getting a level 70 Simple would be really good. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm still debating. I've been putting it off my proper choice as to whether I'm going to 70 Simful for a while, and I would have done it the other day. But I was missing six orbs, and I was like, fine, if I can't get these last six orbs, then I'm just... I'm just not going to do Simful right now. And so instead I just empowered Dual Perception. So if we manage to get enough to empower Simful, maybe we'll take him to 70. It's mainly just so that then we have an easy time in Master Arena in case we ever get back there. Um, but then again, getting Dual Perception to max before Simful is, I think, the smart choice. You know, it may not be what my heart wants to do, but, you know, Dual Perception is just insanely good as a dragon, so... Yeah, I know what the smart choice is. Maybe we will go back on it like with Haunted, where I was... No, I really wanted Haunted, but I didn't go for it in the end. So, you think they trolled us in the Kanga event? Well, maybe. Should you just go for Anaconda? Regardless of whether you have Anaconda or Platypus in your maze event, I still think that the best choice for the grand majority of players and just overall is going to be to go for those, um, those keys and because, I mean, the event items are on that path, the, uh, the, what's it called, the insignias are on that maze path as well. So the smart choice for everyone, realistically, is to go down the, uh, the keys path. That is regardless of whether you've got the new dragon or not. And I mean, in a in a potential world where maybe they go back on this ridiculous choice to put Anna Conductor, not Anna Conductor, Anna Conductor in this event, maybe there's a chance they go back on this and actually fix the event. And in that case, I would rather be on that path than not be on that path. I mean, again, the Alo Dragon and Dragoni, you know, they're decent legendaries, although Alo fills me with um, a lot of fear because I don't know how many of you know this, but there was an Alo event quite a few months ago. And uh, this was back when I just started playing Dragon City again. And I'd saved up all of my, my runner event currency. And then I had one reset left to go. And all that I needed to do was spend the remaining reset currency. And I forgot. 
and then then I, I missed out on Alo and I got clowned on for it. So Alo is um, a not so great taste in my mouth. It is still to this day. So personally, I cannot recommend anyone to collect Alo after the after the despair that was caused to me many many months ago. Um, but that is my personal gripe with that legendary. Of course, if you just really want to go for a specific legendary for some reason, then power to you. Do whatever the heck you want. Um, but the event collection this time is very good. So at the same time, if you haven't been collecting all of the event collection items so far, you're probably not going to get those Joker Orbs because they're not easy to get. So you really had to be on it with the previous events like Puzzle and that as well to be able to get them. So it depends on what you've been focusing on so far. But like I said, this is where I'm up to in the Danger in the Outback event. Like we got another warning sign just now. So we get some more trade essence, which is tasty. Uh, but in this in this collection here, you realistically have to be at least halfway done or more than halfway done by this point for you to be able to get enough items out of the remaining two events. So I hope that you've been collecting those items so far. If not, then rest in rip, rest in pep, I guess. I'm also waiting 15 minutes for this egg to hatch so that then we can get a few more of these runner stamps and then we should be good for some more of these uh, pinwheel runs. Hello, Eldritch. Uh, but what, you got Greedy Vampire? Uh, greedy is not the best, to be honest with you. I mean, any vampire is for the most part okay because it's a legendary with a special skill. However, there are definitely specific vampires that generally are considered better either because of their skills or because of their primary element or because of both. And the best, I guess, early game vampires, so you know, not including corrupted dragons or anything like that, is going to be Hexed, Sinful, or Blood God. Those are the three main guys. Of course, Sinful and Blood God both share Chaos as a primary, Hexed as Pure as a primary. So if you are going to pick up High Nest in the upcoming Heroic Race, you definitely, definitely do not want to be using Hexed Vampire with High Nest. Absolutely not. And um, that would be really bad for your team to have two dragons that are weak to primal. And at the same time, we've had tons of primal dragons released recently. So you'd basically be giving yourself a death wish, especially with dual perception recently having been available. Yeah, you'll you'll just die. <laughs> you, your team will not do well with, with two pure primary element dragons. Having one is fine, um, even if primal has become quite quite common recently uh, but having two is absolutely it's not a good idea and i always say this to people they say oh which vampire should i summon and the answer is simply well what is your team you can't just say which vampire should i summon because it completely depends on your team already the heroics that you have that sort of thing there's no just generic always pick this dragon 100% of the time, not for anyone. I mean, Jewel Perception's very close. He's very close to being that dragon, but even he's not there. Because if you've got two other dragons that share all of his ele um, his elements, you don't want to be taking him either. And there's Mr. Panther. I don't remember. Is this similar to the Mr. Beast dragon? It is, isn't it? It's, they've got this horrible shading on them. Ugh. When you were st starting Dragon City, Fire Titan was the one who c carried your ass. Oh my, how things have changed. Lava Lamp? Eh. Eh. Using your name feels weird. Well, you shouldn't put your name in front of me, hot babe. It's that simple. But yeah, we've all got to grind with these runner events. And, you know, you realistically in these runner events... Uh, people ask all the time, how many how many stamps do I need? How many pinwheels do I need? The answer is you should be looking to get 110 plus pinwheels in every single run. Um, excuse my voice there. I think I had an aneurysm. Uh, but you should realistically be trying to aim for 110 plus every run. I know that that is, for mobile users in particular, a little bit of a tall ask. So I would say 100 minimum. I know that there are some tougher obstacles that spawn at around the 70 mark, like here. But, oh, look, we got both of them that time. Uh, but you, they, they are very much doable. As long as you have some sort of 
or you're used to the runner events I would say and you know how to handle each obstacle you should never struggle to get a hundred pinwheels in every run. The only exception would be if you get like super distracted by something you know someone walks in uh I don't know your phone lags out or something then yeah I, I get it it happens we all get distracted sometimes sometimes we're not paying attention sometimes we fat finger I know it happens but realistically to do really well in these events you have to be getting like 100 plus every run without fail um of course you can go for high scores in this event as well but as i made sure to let you know in my previous guide doing so is completely useless like the amount of food and gold that you get after 120 is not it's not worth it you might as well just you know kill yourself please don't tell that out of context but kill your dragon at 120 and then just restart do another run it's the fastest way of doing it as well so why the heck not but there's some more maze coins there's a lunch box i'm not gonna watch an ad for that message retracted i sing dc has a thing for reusing dragon designs dc does have you seen dml my goodness can you join my alliance to trade? Uh, I mean, any of the open Quackalax alliances, you can submit your request to them uh, because, I mean, in the main flock, we don't really have a spot, although someone didn't score anything in the last chest, so they may be getting kicked um, if they don't score at the beginning of the next chest. So maybe we'll have one spot in the main flock. But, you know, the other alliances, they're not managed directly by me. It would be whatever that leader chooses to do. Um, unfortunately, Dragon City doesn't have like a multiple mass manage alliances option because otherwise I would be able to log in and, you know, manage the other alliances that we have as well. But there's no option in this game. So instead, we just have to rely on the other appointed leaders. And some of them just wanted to, you know, make the alliance for the sake of making it so they're not all going to be the super super most active alliance leaders ever and it's not like i asked them to be you know one day we could make a super sweat alliance we definitely could or we could just make an off-brand version of the alliances so you know we've got like quackalax one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven but then what if we have quackalax flock one two three four five you know what i mean we could we could have those as the sweat alliances um, do I think it's necessary? Absolutely not. That's why it would be chaotic and fun. Um, but yeah, seriously, if you ever want just an alliance, there's no guarantee every single chest is going to be level 6 chest because, you know, not everyone is capable of scoring that much, especially during arena chests, the newer players especially. Uh, but if you at least want an alliance that's full of players that will probably be willing to trade with you, just submit to any of the Quackalax alliances if you want or any other alliance in the game that you find. You know, you don't have to apply to one of mine. Just if you're here and you're asking, you can you can apply if you want. It's up to you. All right, good night, Eld. But yeah, I mean, we've still got 93 of these runner stamps to use. Oh God, it genuinely takes like, what, two hours total of grinding, I think, to use up all of our um, runner stamps per event. And sometimes doing the grind alone is just a bit, it's a bit too much, you know. Normally when I do runner event grind, it's, I'll have a, another video up either just behind the game, just so I can hear it, or I'll have music on, or I'll have something else playing in the background. Um, it's not quite the same as some, like in rescues, I, I usually lift between dragon rescues, but you can't do that with runner events. Um, it would be cool if you could, but I do not think I'm capable of lifting at the same time as playing this event. I am not quite that skilled. Not yet. Maybe one day we will become that skilled, but um, yeah, I generally, for all events in this game, I normally have at least something on the other monitor, especially if I'm ad watching. I don't know if anyone else does that, but I just cannot stand having the game open on mobile as like the only focus. So that's why I'm a predominantly PC player. Plus the game feels better on PC, plus you don't get pop-up ads on PC even if you're free to play, whereas on mobile you definitely do. Um, so much like DML actually, there are quite a few benefits to playing this game on PC that I don't really see people talk about very often. 
and especially runner event runner event on pc is infinitely better than mobile i will never ever recommend people to play this event on mobile because it's just so much worse everything about this event sucks on mobile uh, but you know doesn't mean it's not doable it's just having to oh i missed one of them i did it a bit early oh well it's only one pinwheel but i absolutely hate i hate having to play runner events on mobile hate it but there we go we got another dragon in the form of mr bull mr bull do you see him that's okay no problem i'm here to help guide you if you're ever confused or if you want my advice that is uh, what did i get in the dragon tv 50 chest i got a whole load of glut so even though i've already got a gluttonous vampire hatched even though i've got 120 orbs for gluttonous vampire and i've now got two two eggs for gluttonous vampire it's just getting ridiculous same thing happened with high reverie like where is she I already have High Reverie, and now I've got two dupes of her. Even though I've got all of these other heroics that I would happily add to my collection to boost my dragon count, no. The game is dead set on just giving me empower material. Ugh. It's just not the same, you know? I'm, I really want to get a thousand dragons soon, like sooner rather than later, but they're just, they're just, they're just not having any of it, apparently. Sorry, my days. But anyway, apparently there's a refresh reset period at the moment. Is that egg done now? How long? Five minutes and then we can get our war dragon egg. Fine. So let's collect all of our gold and maybe feed up a dragon. Just so that we can make sure that we fully collected all of our maze coins. And let's go spend them quick and then we can continue with runner again. And have I heard of Monster Legends? Yes, I actually played Monster Legends... When was it released? Uh, around about the same time I played Dragon City for the first time. I played Monster Legends when it was like first released. I played it for like probably a couple of weeks and got bored, which is to be expected, honestly. Um, and I have heard a lot of bad things about New Age Monster Legends, mainly in terms of how pay to win it is and like the specialized arenas, you have to pay for the pass for that. So it's like, why would I do that? I could just go and play I don't know, Pokemon or something else, you know, like a better version of it. <laughs> There's no reason at all for it. Either way, here's another dragon warning sign. There we go. Hot, hot, hot. And uh, we do need to get this green key here and then we'll be on that other path after that. So yeah, we do need to finish off this Cerberus path, at least up to the key first. And now, even if we don't get any dragons from this Outback Maze event, I'm not too bothered. I'm mainly just going after the the actual items, like the rucksacks and the insignias. That's that's my draw for this event right now. But at least we'll get some of the extra orb chests and things on the way through, right? You wish you had those. You wish. Um, but yeah, Alo. I do not forget you, Alo. It was like the cutest pirate bird ever, and I can't believe I screwed up that badly <laughs> in his runner event. It was so depressing. Oh, it was so very depressing. Um, but I think that's our last rare dragon summoned now, because now when I go to summon, you'll see that all commons, I've got all of my commons summoned. All rares, that's all my rares summoned. So now I'm actually having to go to VRs. Which, there's quite a lot of VRs to get, but that's ridiculous. We don't have a single common or rare to hatch anymore. Seriously? I don't know. Wild to me. How to empower Morpheus fast if someone just hatched? There is no quick way to empower Morpheus anymore. The way that you would empower Morpheus previously was by getting him out of the Alliance chest, but he's not in the Alliance chest now. So the only way that you could empower Morpheus is by breeding him and the way that you can breed Morpheus is actually with a time dragon like if we get time up we've got breeder feeder um and let's get up a it is dream right it should be dream uh but let's get a dream dragon and you'll see that Morpheus is part of the breedables in the non-empowered section and so you can breed Morpheus and like with this dragon that I've got here we could also breed Quasar 
which is a dragon I don't actually have yet. So this is actually quite a good breeding combination because you can get those two. You can get like Pyramagus, which is a really nice looking dragon, TBH Magic Primary as well. This guy is pretty baller. Um, but I would say that this is a pretty good combination. Then of course I could breed Astral Rem as well. But I would say that breeding time together with Mr. Rodney here is actually not a bad combination at all. But it's same with some of the others as well. Like if we go with Soul Element, you can get, say, Million. So there's some good time breedable combinations, but that is the only way that you'll get your hands on Morpheus at the moment, unless he comes out in some sort of event, but you can't empower him any other way, apart from trading, of course. Um, so yeah, good luck with that. Um... Thank you, Krampus. Thank you, Krampus. Well, I guess we will get back to our runner grind for now. Uh, and then after this run, we will probably be able to hatch that war dragon egg. We'll get a few more runner stamps and then we come back. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention about the runner events is if you ever want to know how many runner event stamps you need for an event, it is actually on the deep list website a calculator that allows you to work out how many stamps you'll need to use based on your average runner score which i think is pretty good for a resource to have because no matter what happens what changes the events encounter and things like that outside if they actually change the pinwheel earnings but their calculator allows you to see how many runs essentially it's going to take for you to get enough pinwheels to get say the dragon or to get to a specific milestone and so i'll show you that in a moment just as we go to hatch our war dragon egg but i think it's definitely definitely a resource that not enough people know exists and you know anyone could really make their own make their own calculator of it because it's not a very difficult calculator to make but the fact that it already exists like don't break it and it's it's deep it's um deep lift not ditlep which i know some people have a hate boner for Ditlep. So no, it's on deep list instead. So you can just go and use that um, calculator on the other website and there's no problems with using it. It seems to work just fine for me. Um, if it didn't work, I would tell you. Uh, but yeah, I've seen a lot of people ask about that in particular. So I think that's something that a lot of people would benefit from just to know what stage they're at in the event, how likely they are to finish that sort of thing. But there's another 120 pinwheel run. Again, we've not encountered any problems so far. No lagging, nothing like that. How do you do the trick where you breed your terror dragons for the tickets to play the current event? Uh, if you mean in terms of, say, these tasks, like if you get a breeding task and you're saying, how do you make it count towards the item? It's just a 10% chance each time you breed. You just have to breed and breed and breed and breed because it's only a 10% drop rate. So that's literally it. Um, it's mainly because the Terra Dragons have a really short timer. So you just have to breed lots of them lots of times. Like, that. That that's simply it. There's no trick. There's no guaranteed method. It's the same thing that you would do during heroic races to get the items without filling up your inventory well, your hatchery and your breeding dens. You would just use Terra X Terra. Hello. You've only been playing one and a half months and you have three vampires. Seriously, you can get tons of them. You really can. But anyway, like I was talking about, in terms of if you want to know how likely it is that you will get your hands on Devil right now, for instance, you can take your current score in this event. So mine's 1,673. You can take your current flight stamps and then if we go on to the deep list website here and we go to the runner island section and then if we scroll down it shows us what mission set we've got it shows us the upcoming mission set which is going to be collect gold feed dragons and collect food which honestly that might be my favorite one without permanent speed ups i think i think this is going to be my favorite set of missions that's coming up here because collect food is very annoying but it's very doable with the shortest food timers but anyway if you scroll down further you'll see runner island pinwheel calculator and so use the calculator below to see how many pinwheels you could unlock and so you could put in your current stamps and your remaining stamps so that would be how many you've already used for example uh, but like if you say um let's say we've got 
zero current stamps and 90 remaining stamps for instance and let's say we got an average score of 110 pinwheels how many pinwheels will 90 give us it'll give us 1980 which is to be expected because of maths um but then let's say we've got 200 and we calculated that's 4400 pinwheels and then you could go back to the other event for instance like well the other website and then we could go to the runner event and then you can say, oh, what's it, 4,400? Oh, we'd be able to get the ins Ascended Insignias with that many. But of course, Devil himself is at 4,500 points. So then if you say 205 stamps, that's going to give you enough for Devil. Uh, but that would be with an average score of 110 pinwheels per run. So again, depends on your average score because that's going to be the deciding factor, that and how many stamps you actually collect by the end of the event but if your average score is say one well let's say 118 say you have near perfect scores every single run and then let's say you do 150 runs that's going to give you 3500 if you do 200 with that it's going to get you 4700 so it does make a difference based on your score every run and a difference of 10 per run does add up quite a lot so you, you do need to be trying to do as well as you can in every single runner event run. But this is a really good calculator that you can use if you ever just want to double, triple check that you can actually make it in this event. So you got Apex. Should you trade orbs for it to empower it? Apex as a dragon isn't necessarily terrible. Where is he? Let's let's open up his page because I did get his egg earlier, of course, as you can see. Um, Apex does have primary element of primal, which means that he is he's only weak to legend, which isn't bad. But his other elements are quite they're quite common elements. Um, I know that he obviously has a higher category than most legends because he is a mythical. But I think that um, if you were looking for an a an end game team, you wouldn't be picking Apex. You'd be picking something else. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't use him. Say if you're a brand new player and you've just gotten a hold of him, you can definitely use him. But I probably wouldn't take him past level 40. I don't think he's worth the time investment. And I certainly don't think he's worth wasting essence and orbs for of other dragons, if you know what I mean. Only one more dragon TV coin to go until you get your 50 coin chest. Well, good luck with that. You know, I saw tons of people complaining that they got that other dragon. What's, what's he called? Was it Elder? The one with the, the big beard anyway. And the thing is, I don't think I've got Elder. So compared to the gluttonous vampire uh, that I got, I actually would have preferred it. <laughs> but you know, as they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. And I got trash and some got uh, kind of trash. But to me, it would have been a, a mini treasure. Of course, the best drops out of the, the Dragon TV gold chest would either be the Heroic Dragon or it would be the Karmas, generally speaking, because Karmas are really hard to get. And obviously, Heroics can be a pain to get as well. Although, if it's just a regular Heroic, people trade for Heroics a lot. But with Karmas, they are just quite difficult to get and not a lot of people summon them because they don't need to. So Karma Dragons are quite difficult to get. Same with Corrupted Titans, even though there is a collection for them. Two collections, in fact. They're just not easy to get. And your realistic only... Your only way of really getting them is from like ads or special events. So that is why they're so sought after as well, especially since they give Corrupted Legend and Corrupted Chaos. Um, but Karma Dragons, I'm not a fan of them because they're RNG, but I would still love to just, you know, add them to our game because why would I not? But we can't always get what we want. And sometimes we get 16 Gluttonous Vampires instead. I've... It's like, I don't even know whether I want to hatch it to get the orbs. I probably don't. I probably just want to just... just hatch new dragons to be honest i know as a brand new player you'd be like oh, you're not gonna get your your vampire no i'm probably not <laughs> genuinely uh, at least not for a while or until i can be bothered or if someone begs me for orbs maybe um you're currently doing the cosmic detonation dragon it sure is cool looking can you talk more about him i mean cosmic detonation is just a good dragon overall because he does have a multi-hit attack 
And the reason that multi-hit attacks are so good is not actually because they're inherently good in themselves, because, you know, multi-hit attacks, they all have RNG as to how many times they hit, which means they're not super consistent. However, one major benefit to having multi-hit skills is that they counter quite a lot of other dragons. And by that, I mean they counter titans, they counter karmas. Well, they technically counter karmas, but um, if you've ever been annoyed that a karma dragon just full blocks your entire attack, you can just use a multi-hit attack and then it can go straight through because they might block it once, but then the other attacks will hit. So... That means that it is technically a counter to Karma Dragons as well. And I think there's a few other situations as well in which it's good, but Cosmic Detonation also does get arena boosts as well because of fire. Um, so that can be really nice during fire arenas. But just in general, I think he's just a decent dragon because of his skill. Having fire as a primary element isn't the best because you are weak to, you know, war, which is super common. And then, you know, there's Earth as well. But I think that he is definitely probably the best breedable in the game. Deluge, which you can get from rescues, is also pretty good. He's like his brother from another mother of Cosmic Detonation. And he does have a different primary, which can be good, depending on what you need. But unlike Cosmic Detonation, you can't breed Deluge, which is the reason why people would go for Cosmic Deto instead basically. Is Vulcan good to invest in? Vulcan? Um, the fact that I can't even remember off the top of my head what it is makes me think, no, it's not. <laughs> Perception, Cosmic Detonation, Morpheus. That is a good, good team for now. Naughty or Haughty Vampire Dragon, good. Haughty? Who's Haughty? Um, how can you get your hatching quest done fast? If you don't have any eggs that are going to be available soon to hatch then you you have to use terra plus terra like that is, or that's if you're going to be breeding them but if you're going to be hatching them i mean then you just go into the shop gold terra um this technically isn't quick but this is the only way that you can do it realistically like if you don't want to fill up your hatchery or your breeding dens when you're trying to do these tasks you just have to put in terra eggs like that that's it gold terra buy wait for the cooldown get in place Pop. wait for the until you actually get an item come up that is it that is all that you can do that is the same as the heroic race guide and tips that you would do during heroic race you have to do it unfortunately is terra good to invest in what a terra dragon what a level 70 terra dragon hell yeah take them up to 70 you think dalish is a girl really dalish has man vibes for me you have Hexed Vamp, Greedy Vamp, and Usurper. Um, I hope not all in the same team. I hope that you're just a collector of vampires, because otherwise that would be a bit yikes. Blood God or Sinful. As I said before, you can't just say Blood God or Sinful without giving me your team. And I think the best time to give that would not be when I'm in the middle of runner runs, to be honest. Um, but the reason is because how good a dragon is for you is one going to come down to how good the dragon is in general but also the elements that it has and the skills that it has so for instance blood god might be good in theory but maybe you already have all of his other elements on your team in which case you don't want to be adding him to your team so you you have to always give your current team your current available heroics and things like that as well because otherwise any advice that you ask for is not going to be meaningful um it's really important in this game especially with arenas that you make sure that you take as many elements in your team as possible and i mean you can have multiple teams you can have like six teams eventually if you want but especially early on to make sure that you don't get completely screwed over in certain arenas you want to make sure that you have a massive range of elements ideally you would have 12 unique elements on your team but i know that that is going to be really difficult to manage depending on your options but you realistically want to avoid duplicating elements as much as possible Again, if you're someone that has a bunch of level 70s and you can get everything out of the Master Arena anyway, doesn't matter for you. But for anyone else, which is the majority of players, you really do have to be mindful to not duplicate your elements. 
I can only say it so many times, but really important. Legacy is amazing to invest in. <laughs> Doubt. Do I know when the next summoning happy hour is? Nobody knows 100% guaranteed because Social Point can change the release dates for them at any time. Um, but it will likely be next month. Likely. Maybe the start of next month if we go by their old schedule, but it could just be any time next month. There's no guarantee. You've got a health perk. Should you put it on your high tension? I don't think that anyone should be putting any perks on any dragons unless it's their final endgame team personally. So unless you have a fully fleshed decided upon final endgame team, I don't think you should be putting any perks on your team. That's me personally. I think it's just a waste if you do that and if you put it on a dragon that you end up dropping later on, you're gonna feel like a numpty. So don't do it, you know? Do you even use Redemption Malice? Nope. Nope, because my current options are better and there's no way to empower him outside of Joker Orbs, so that would take them away from Sinful, so why would I do it? I wouldn't. You want Blood God in your team? Well, it would... If you really want to have it for collecting or for specific parts of your team, you've got to decide what you want it for. Other than Cosmic Deo, what are the best breedable ones and good for the late game? There aren't any other really great breedables that have skills, but as we saw earlier if you do time dragon breeding you can get your hands on dragons like morpheus and you can get your hands on dragons like quasar and a couple of others that actually have pretty decent primary elements and an okay set of other elements like morpheus for example he has dream which is really good against chaos dragons because it's super effective against them so that is why morpheus was such an insane alliance dragon to get before so you can go for a breed like that. Outside of that, you can go for other easy breedables like say Terraformer, which would be two empowered Terra Dragons together. Or you could go with, there's a couple of others like that. There's also Vitality, which you could breed as well. But I think generally my, my list of favorite picks for breedables would be Cosmic Detonation, Morpheus, Quasar, personally. And there may be a few others, again, just any four-elemented legendary that you can breed that has a good primary element and some other useful elements as well is one that you could just breed for. But please be aware that with time breeding, they're not easy to breed those dragons. So even though we can say that it's a good pickup to go for a specific breedable, it's not easy to breed Morpheus at all. Uh, the reason Cosmic Detonation is good on top of everything else is because he's also easy to breed. So, uh, yeah, uh, unless you have a secret strategy for breeding Morpheus dragons every time, you are going to have a hard time breeding him. Fawn might help if you've got the Fawn Tower, but otherwise you're, you're going to have a struggle. What do you think about the old dragon designs in the first time? I thought that a lot of them were quite icky, um, but had a, a, a kind of cuteness to them. Um, but they, they do look old, a lot of them. Um, yeah, this game is still active. It's still got an active player base. The game is still alive. I returned and it's a lot better than it used to be. Although if they keep making choices like randomly replacing Platypus for some players, don't know if I'll keep that opinion forever, you know? What perks are the best for dual perception? Completely depends on what you've got and what you've got on the rest of your team, really. Lots of people just want to take the raw damage because they want him to be as explosive as possible. Um, other people would want to take at least a Phoenix perk on him, but you can realistically take anything on dual perception. He will be absolutely nuts. So I would say stack up your perks first and then spend them when you've decided finally what you've got and what you've got on your team. See and tell diff between Abyss and Apocalypse Dragon. Uh, what do you mean? If if you're naming two different dragons, the difference would be they're two different dragons. What? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Double pure you think is breedable and it has a skill. Um, you can breed lots of dragons in this game. A lot of these dragons in this game that you can breed aren't that good. Now, I say that, but 
pretty much any dragon that has more than say two elements that is fully empowered will be useful for a while so what you can do as a new player is if you do manage to get super super duper breeding lucky with a particular dragon that has a good primary you can actually just use that in arenas for a while like there is nothing against you getting a more fierce dragon on his own to level 60 or 70 and just using him for a while until you get some better options there's nothing wrong with doing that um and if you can manage to make that happen for another easier breedable dragon like a cosmic detonation or something definitely do that because that is the way that you can optimize your dragon leveling essentially is by using one legendary one heroic and then one breedable reason being that then you're using legendary joker orbs to empower the legendary you're using heroic joker orbs to empower the heroic and then you don't have to use any joker orbs on the breedable because you're breeding for it that is going to be one of the fastest ways to make a good team in the shortest amount of time possible now that doesn't mean that the breedable is not going to take months it will but to fully empower a legendary and a heroic alone will take you months. This is all free to play, of course. If you spend, you could do that in half a second. Uh, but if you are free to play or looking just to not spend money directly on empowerment, then the way to do it would be one legend, one heroic and one breedable dragon. Uh, it just makes sense. You don't want to have three legendaries in your team because how are you ever going to get them empowered? You won't. So don't do it. <laughs> it's not a smart choice. Um, how about uh, Mia Mia Mephosis? Uh, which one? Um, I'm not like a massive Dragon City expert on Dragon Elements off the top of my head. Maybe after like a year or two of playing, I will be. But like, just throwing a Dragon name at me is not gonna picture in my mind what its elements are yet. So you'd have to show a picture, or I'd have to go and look it up on say, you know, Ditlep or Deetless, because that's mostly what I do. If someone says a dragon name to me and I do not remember it, all four of its elements, I'll go and look it up on say, Ditlep immediately and then make sure that I know what I'm talking about. So like, if I forget Hexed, I'll go, wait, Hexed? Who's that again? Oh yeah, it's pure shadow, fire and war. So, well, flame. And then we can go from there. But I'm not going to remember every single dragon's elements just by you saying a name. Um, so that's normally why it's better if I do that on Discord when I'm not doing a runner event because there is no way in hell I am going to remember that while I'm doing an event at the same time. <laughs> no way. Oh, you used to play back on Facebook. That's where I started as well. I started playing this game back on Facebook, back in the glory days, back where it was linked to all of my Facebook friends. The only reason I actually ever started playing this game was actually just so that I could um, beat my friend years ago. And by beat my friend, I mean surpass his player level. That was it. That was my only reason for playing this game, just to surpass his player level. Not to actually breed or battle or do anything of value. It was just to get to a higher level than him. And I am telling you the millisecond the millisecond that I achieved it, I immediately never played the game again until like four years later or something, which I came back, did like two battles with Obese Mary, and then I dropped it again. But then coming back to this game last year, which was on my birthday or around about my birthday last year, the game had changed so very much back to how it was even when I'd returned like four years after or whatever it was, three years or something. Um... I don't know exactly what happened in that time period, but the game was just so different. Like it had all these new mechanics. It had all of these new breedables. It had all these super cool looking dragons now. And generally the events were, well, they were actually pretty decent for the most part, unlike DML, which was making an absolute ass of itself in the meantime. But no, DC comparatively, no matter how much Dragon City players complain about this game, is infinitely better than some of its competition, amazingly enough. Um, and that is not me trying to suck off Dragon City, that is just me being honest. Like, the events, the available dragons, the breeding, the amount that you can achieve in this game free-to-play is actually really, really quite a lot. Um, 
And you can get a level 70 within six months of playing this game if you really focus on the event collections and just focus on a specific dragon. Easily you can have a level 70, definitely. <laughs> Tips for getting food. There aren't any, apart from play the events. Um, a lot of people have this misconception in these events that the way to get food would be by using your farms. And while that is true, you can definitely get food from your farms by putting in, you know, the one day timers or the 12 hour timer food. This isn't actually your primary food earning method. Your primary food earning method in Dragon City is actually going to be the events. And you can see this in these events because you'll come across food chests when you're on, say, a maze event. Maybe you'll go through a path that has just random snips of like 100,000 food, 200,000 food, 500,000 food out of the chest, and it stacks up really, really quickly. And like, even in this runner event that we've got, we've got these random food chests. And honestly, you open up enough of them, you'll hit quite a lot of these times 3.84 million food drops. You get tons of food from these events. Like, even if you get the second highest drop, 230,000, we've got quite a lot of these food chests. So you can just open up a few of these in this one event. There's an XL chest, a banquet box in this event, for example, like there is every runner event. That is how you get food. It is not primarily from farming. Of course, you can do farming on top of the events as well, because it's just going to be bonus food. But your main way of getting food while also completing the events and collections is just by doing the events. It's that simple. The moment you said little baby Rowlet made me also say it's my baby. <laughs> yeah, he's cute. Like Dragon Mania? No. No, I don't. That's why I destroyed my account. You're about to get the first legend and you got so many coins. You got mine and you have zero. Um, If you do badly in each of your... I don't think I've actually died yet in a runner event run. I think I've gotten 118 plus every run so far, or maybe 117 plus. I'm going to say that and then crash into a rock, aren't I? But you really, really have to be getting like 120 close to every single run. You really do. It makes a big difference in your total score. Any tips on how to get more green tokens? The way to get more maze currency out of just logging in for every reset is going to be do your runner event run now so that you get all of these bonus maze coins and pray that we get some ads with some maze coins in them tomorrow. That is the only thing that you can do. Just do the runner event, get the maze event currency from the runner event, and then pray for some ads. There is nothing else to it. Um, I wish that there was more of a way to get more maze event currency, but there isn't. Uh, that's the main reason that I was so shocked that Dual Perception was actually free to play obtainable because who was expecting Dual Perception, the whole dragon and such an insanely good path to be completely free to play, free to play acquirable? I didn't. I definitely didn't, but I still got it <laughs> just by playing the events. Um, but the events that are gemmable in this event, mainly runner events and heroic races, for example, and puzzle events, um, they're the ones that you can gem. All of the other events in the game, you can't. So, maze events, uh, tower events, uh, what else do we have? Grid events, uh, we've got fog events. All of those, you just have to log in for the resets, and there's not really much else you can do within the events themselves, apart from just that. Just log in and don't waste your currency when you are in the middle of the event. Um, I do wish that they were gemmable, just so that then they were, you know, the same as the runner events and that, but that's not the world that we live in. But it's another reason why I love runner events so much, because this is an event where you can genuinely just gem and get to any reward that you want if you have enough gems to do so. So, as much as people complain about this event, I will always be a staunch runner event advocate. Now, one thing that I would like in these runner events is that rather than us requiring us to do like two hours of resets every single event, if they cut it down to like 30 minutes total, I would be in favor of that uh, because it is a lot of runner runs to have to do, a lot of sitting down, doing the same thing. I know it can get very repetitive, um, but it is part of the grind of this game, I'm afraid. What is the best heroic to start training for? Completely depends on what you need. Completely depends on your team and what your team needs. 
um, you can't just say take this heroic because you could have a good selection of heroics already. They just need a good primary element to start with and then depending on their other elements whether they fit into your team or not. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of good things for Co Cookie Run Kingdom. I'm not going to waste my time in another mobile S game. One's enough. Uh, it is definitely easier on PC to play the runner event infinitely. If you haven't watched my guide already on how to do each of the obstacles in this event, definitely do that uh, because I showed it on both mobile on and on PC how to do it. Uh, but every single obstacle in this game you can clear without fail. I think on mobile it does come down to whether your device is, you know, is it a powerful enough device to not lag? Are you swiping properly? Is the screen cracked? Because as much as people like to pretend their cracked screens are okay, they're really not good for certain inputs sometimes. Like sometimes they just don't work properly. Um, so that's a reason you should definitely take care of your electronic equipment. Um, but you know, it's not as easy on mobile and sometimes you might crash into stuff, but definitely if you can link your game to PC, link it to PC and just play runner event on PC with a, a set of arrow keys in a space bar. It is, oh, it's bliss comparatively. Like you've seen so far with me on this stream today, just how easy it is for me to get 120 either every single time or close to every single time. Uh, because especially since we had another runner event recently, my fingers are very much used to the, the patterns my eyes don't even struggle because we did our 300,000 score run recently. Ah, I was going to say that, but then I just... Ah, that hurt. <laughs> you probably couldn't see what I just did, but I just hit on something by accident. There you go. There's a run where I didn't get 120. There you go. You can laugh at me now. Uh, but unless something like that happens, you should be getting the max score pretty much every single time. That was like some sort of finger spasm. Ugh. <laughs> anyway... That's what I get. I told you it would happen eventually. I'd screw up at least once, but you know, definitely play it on PC anyway. Uh, but yes, I've played Monster Legends, but I don't want to play it. No thanks. I've heard about the pay to win. Not interested. How to become the Dragon TV. Uh, I don't know how you'd become it outside of outright cosplay. Uh, I mean, you could... Uh, you could make a suit and dress yourself up as the TV. Uh, I don't know, that's up to you, but kind of weird. If you mean how do you unlock Dragon TV, then the way that you'd unlock it is by logging in for at least 21 days in a row. I don't know why there's this arbitrary 21 days in a row to unlock Dragon TV. I have no idea why that is a thing, but that is apparently it. That's what the mods say anyway, and I've seen people unlock it on like day 22, 23 before. So it's around about 21 days in a row that you have to log in to be able to unlock Dragon TV. And it's really important that you do really, if you're free to play especially, because when you do that, you will get event currency for every single event when they get ads in them. And so I think that's really important because otherwise getting dual perception and those other dragons and the other events done, it's not doable free to play in a lot of cases without having the ads currency, which obviously that's their way of getting you to watch ads to generate money for them, even if you're free to play, which is fine. I personally don't have an issue because the ads in this game actually give a decent reward. Unlike some other similar Dragon games, which have the worst ad rewards I like, ever made. Uh, but definitely in Dragon City, the ads give you currency. The ads can give you, you know, the 50 coin Dragon TV dragons. Some of those are insane. Karma dragons, Titan dragons, uh, heroics. What else could we ask for? There isn't really much else. That That is just it. That's everything that we could want, right? You called one Robin Hood, Robin Hoot, and Hawkeye. Fair enough. It's, it's a lovely name. Uh, you'd have to have logged in for 21 days in a row. I think that's probably the part that you've missed, unfortunately. Got any ideas when the new quests come to the live server? I really want to get dual perception to platinum before you empower him. Which quests? 
which quests are we talking about? You say when the quests come, uh, do you mean the new version of quests? Um, because if you're talking about the quests that you can cancel out of to keep ranking up, I don't know if that's intentional or whether that's just bug abuse, to be honest. Uh, people that have been using that, I've said to them, I'm personally not going to be doing that until they confirm that it's okay, uh, because it seems like bug abuse to me, and bug abuse is bannable. Um, so until Social Point confirm otherwise, I would assume that that is a bannable offence, so I don't recommend it, to be honest. Um, either way, that's Cave Modo unlocked. So we've got a few more things to unlock in Signia's, and we've got our new quest now. So let's go and um, finish off a couple of these quests now. Collect gold should be doable. There we go. We've got some more feed dragons, nice and easy, and collecting that food like we said earlier. So collecting food again is very tedious, just like... Um, a lot of the other tasks I know, but make sure that if you are doing collect food that you're putting in the shortest timer in any of the farms that you've opened up and say you don't have enough items yet, make sure you go and throw in the blue bell, the blue bell bouquets so that you can get the items from them. But it will require a lot of refreshing and, you know, collecting items, going back in, collecting again. I know it can be annoying, but this is how you do it. Um, put it in as many farms as possible so that then you can just collect everything at once. But where's a level one dragon? Do we have any? Yeah, there we go. Andre. Spirit Shackle. Yeah, fair enough. You don't have the option to watch ads for event rewards. That's because you don't have full Dragon TV unlocked. That's what we're talking about. You may have an option to watch some ads, but you don't get full Dragon TV unlocked. So the one where you can get event currency unless you log in for 21 days in a row. If you missed a day, there's a chance that that may have reset. Honestly, that may be the case. Um, again, it's some sort of weird system that they implemented that they never give full proper details on, probably for a specific reason. Uh, but it's 21 days in a row is what the mods repeat for Dragon City, so... You waited the whole day for me to do a guide video on the new event? Well, that's kind of weird, considering that the new event only came out eight hours ago. Um, so you can't have been waiting the whole day. <laughs> Kek, but um, no, if you didn't know, I actually do have a life. I do touch grass frequently, daily, nearly. Um, so sometimes you may have to wait. Sometimes I'm not here immediately to do a guide as soon as the event goes live. I know, crazy, uh, but that is the world that we live in. Um, this may surprise you, but Dragon City is not my entire life and my entire being and my entire existence. Thank God, because that would make me sad. But, you know, that doesn't mean that we can't then log in later on or during breaks, which is what I do. Uh, but, you know, with these events, it doesn't actually matter how soon you log in. The only exception to that would be Heroic Race, because Heroic Race, it does matter. Um, it does make quite a significant difference in terms of your, obviously, your starting progress. Um, but any other event in Dragon City, it doesn't actually matter because they will work on some kind of reset-based event. Actually, you know what? Puzzle event as well is the same. It does kind of matter with puzzle events. So two events in Dragon City where it matters. All the others, it does not matter if you log in towards the second half or the end of that reset period. It does not matter. You just want to make sure if your memory is correct, but old time DC had rotating feature for habitats. I don't remember. <laughs> I do not know. What? I'm not on DC and Discord reading every message every single minute. Whoa! I know. Crazy, right? That's crazy. Every single message a, a Dragon City gamer has ever posted, I analyze each. Like some sort of disgraceful weird robot thing i don't know that's apparently me ew ew you touch grass ew ugh disgusting ugh ugh you get money ugh disgusting honestly might as well just just give up now tbh disgraceful behavior if you don't spend every single waking second of your life just with Dragon City open, praying to Dragon City, um, making memes about how much you love Dragon City, 
um, every dragon, understanding every ability, you might as well just give up on life because you've already failed. It's true. It is a fact. There is no contesting it. Absolutely no contest. Um, all I know is I wish that these runner events runs didn't take so long, each of them. I mean, it's fine. As you can see, I'm, I'm not struggling to do them. It's just they do take up quite a lot of an evening, especially with one of these events like this, where we had to wait to use our currency until the next day so that then we could get the maze coins because I would have realistically done this on the weekend where there's generally more free time, at least for me. But no, we have to wait until it gets back to the middle of the week again because because Silly Maze event only just came out, SMH. Terrible, terrible social point. What's good level to recall Cosmic Detonation for a newer player? The answer is still going to be level 30 because level 30 is still going to be the fastest way to do it. Of course, I understand that maybe you don't have enough enough food in general so you could get away with say level 21 but i would say 25 would be your goal realistically but level 30 is the ideal uh, it's gonna be the ideal no matter what your player level is because that's how you get 100 orbs and cosmic detonation can still take months to breed and fully empower and um, so it's still gonna be level 30 but i would say level 21 plus should be your absolute minimum. I'd say 25 if you can afford it, but that's roughly where you should get him to if you're going to recall. It's just so that that way you don't have to breed so many of them because you've got to think every time you're breeding a cosmic detonation, that's time that your breeding den is filled. So that is potentially you missing out on event currency, maybe not doing as well in an existing event as you could. So you have to take that into account as well. As good as Cosmic Detonation can be and as easy as he is to empower compared to other dragons, all things considered, he still takes a while. He still takes a lot of time to breed and recall, you know, all that, all that jazz. Um, but you should still definitely go for him if you want a breedable. Again, if, maybe if you don't even take him to level 70, like my Cosmic Detonation is at level 55 and he does good work in Arena, at least pre-Master Arena still at this point. So you should definitely still consider picking him up if you haven't already, but you know, just be aware that it is a grind. 2,000 orbs to fully empower any dragon in this game. It takes a lot of time. It does. Um, I thought I was a bit delayed on my jump there. Thank goodness I got a little bit scared. But no, there we go. Another one. Should you get Blood God or Jewel Perception? I would say 99% of the time, Jewel Perception is going to be the better choice. But depends on what you've already got on your team, to be honest. Yeah, you'd want to pick the one that duplicates the fewest elements. But Jewel Perception is just so good. Um... So most of the time, even if you end up duplicating one element, I would say dual perception is still the better option. Um, but again, to give you a fully accurate idea or I guess review of what you should pick or something like that, I'd have to know your full team and your full selection of dragons that you currently have. And plus anyone that does ask like, which dragon should I summon? What team should I make? You've got to think that with all of these random events that we're getting, there's the chance that you can pick up heroics or VIP dragons from, well, tons of places. So you may come up with the best early game free to play team ever. And then you may get a random, I don't know, karma drop. Or you might get a random corrupted legend drop. And that means that at that point, you might want to reevaluate what you're taking on your team. And that can happen a lot in this game. As much as people like saying, oh my God, getting dragons out of ads and chests is like impossible. It's really not. Once you've opened hundreds and hundreds of those chests, chances are you're going to have run into at least one of them by now. And that dragon may be a very good one to add to your team. We might even get random events like where you get High Ascended Supreme or something like from the Insignia chest. You might get like the Walking Dead events that came out. They were super, super nice for free to plays because pretty much anyone could get their hands on Michonne. 
Um, so lots of things can happen. Lots of random events can come in and give you some insane dragons and then you have to remake your team. But it's okay to remake your team if it's to replace your dragons with really good ones. It's not good to remake your team by replacing your team with bad dragons. So you need to be aware of meta and which dragons are good, that sort of thing. How do you watch ads in PC? Same way that you watch ads on mobile. You just go over to Dragon TV and you click get rewards. Problem is, ads like to break quite a lot on PC. So, um, for instance, I had the chance to get a times two on my rucksack yesterday, but because I was on PC and the current ad set wouldn't work, I didn't get my times two rucksack. I was very salty about it. Um, that's why I typically watch all of my ads on mobile. So that's why I, I, I do both with Dragon City Light. Look, this is my mobile. And so what I'll do is I'll do runner event on PC. Like I'll log in, do all the runner event jazz, and then I'll close the game. And then I'll open it up on mobile and watch the ads. That's, that's how I play. That is the best way for me to play, uh, the least annoying way for me to play as well. Um, and if you want to play it not on an emulator, all that you have to do is just go to the Microsoft Store. That is it. If you're on an Apple Mac, I don't think there's a way that you can play this game on PC without an emulator. But if you are on a, a Windows device and you've got the Windows Store, just click the Windows Store and just search for Dragon City and install it. That's all. You don't like Time Steal? It's insane because it gives you an extra turn. Or why would you not like an extra turn? You unlocked rescue, what is the best dragon to get? Technically deluge, but seriously, you should just, in rescue, you should just go buy your rescues and just go through your commons, then rares, then VRs, then epics, then legendaries, and unlock all of your rescues first. Um, but there's no particularly great option in rescue, you just do rescues for collection purposes mainly. Is it okay to level up some dragons higher than the rest? It is more than fine. There is no issue with max leveling certain dragons in this game. If you are a level 20 player and you pay to win out of your butthole and take one random dragon to level 70 immediately, it has no negative effect on your gameplay. None. So unlike DML, this game is actually really, really good in that sense where making a choice doesn't hamstring you. Getting a higher level dragon in this game has no downsides from what I'm aware of, there is none. Absolutely no downsides at all. Any idea when is the next summoning happy hour? As I said earlier, there's no guarantees that happy hours ever happen at a specific date. They normally happen once a month. Sometimes they might happen twice a month, but it's probably gonna happen near the beginning of next month. Probably, no guarantee. You just got high voodoo from the Supreme Ascended Chess. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like, you can plan all these teams. You can be a really good player. You can be really diligent with your planning. But then, maybe you'll just open up one of these chests and then suddenly you get your hands on has, or you get your hands on hot, or you get your hands on high voodoo. And then suddenly, your entire team plan gets thrown out the window. And that can happen a lot in this game. It does happen a lot in this game. It's happened to me like five times. So <laughs> I say that if I'd have just picked one dragon to focus on, I easily could have had a level 70 by now. I know that it's just I get really distracted. Like first I got distracted with Sinful and all the other vampires to summon. Then I got distracted by Michonne. Um, it's just there's a lot going on. You know, it takes all of my self-restraint every single time we get an empower happy hour, not an empower, a summon happy hour to not summon corrupted legend. Uh, because I did spend the gems that I got from Ebony on actually getting a uh, Corrupted Legend orb. So yes, I'm very tempted to summon Corrupted Legend, but I need to get at least a Legendary Empowered first. I need to. And don't ask why I'm empowering this Equinox to um, level 5. I, I, why not? Well, it's level 4 at the moment, but I'm sure it will get to 5 eventually. Why not? You got High Sacred Wing and Ascendant Praetor? Not bad. Got to post more fit pics on Insta. Oh my god, I never touch Insta pretty much. The only thing I've touched it for recently is Pokemon cards. <laughs> That's literally it. Uh, I don't know if I can be bothered, maybe. I just don't think about Instagram very often. <laughs> um, 
Weaboo Fem Cell. Should we upgrade Weaboo Fem Cell? Maybe one day. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to make a, a move for now because we've only got a few more runs to do. I don't think we're going to get enough to get Devil quite yet. Um, so maybe I'll save that for next time. But, you know, we've got this collecting food and stuff to do. And mainly I've got food to get cooking because I've not really eaten in a while. I'm very hungry. But I at least wanted to do a stream today because I wanted to at least get quite a lot of these runner event runs done. Uh, but, you know, I am wishing you the best in these events. Wait, where did I just get... Oh, yeah, I must have got the currency from the, the event that we just did. Duh. Am I an idiot? I was like... Where did I just get this event currency from? From the runner event you were just talking about, you numpty. Ugh. Terrible. Terrible. Um, anyway, I'm going to close this door quick. And then in a moment, I am going to skididdle skedaddle away. Um... But yeah, let's quickly use our currency here just because we've got to get a few more items anyway. And we are making our way to this key here. That's the key that we want. And then, of course, we'll be able to unlock Platypus Path then. That is where we're going to be going. What team if you've got high karma? <sighs> There's a lot of good choices. You, If you've got high master karma, you're going to want to avoid chaos mainly. Um, so, like, the Sinfuls and Blood Gods probably aren't ideal in that case because you don't want to be duping Chaos too much. Um, I mean, Dual Perception goes well with pretty much anything. You can put High Mass of Karma with pretty much anything as well. You know, you can, especially with the 500 Orb Dragons, even if you duplicate an element or even two, you can still use them just because they are very overpowered. But ideally, you would pick a dragon that's got as many unique elements as possible, of course, but... It's not always possible, I know. So long, gay Bowser. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's see how far we can get for now, and then we will skedaddly skadoodly. Uh, but yeah, I'm really hoping that we can get Platypus out of this at least. Maybe. Maybe we will. Probably not, but we'll see. There we go. We're going to get one more food chest, which, like I said, food chests are really good in these events. What do we get out of the mystery food chest? Okay, that was the worst drop, but it's fine. I, I don't mind. Even though I went from 100 million food to like 1 million food a few weeks ago during the high, um, I almost called it high virgin quest, <laughs> high virago quest, we're already back to 53 million in time for the upcoming heroic race and we're going to need, what is it, just under 30 mil, something like that for the um, heroic combat quest. So we're still going to have 20 million left over, which I can use for sinful, of course, or any other dragon that I want. So that is going to be my plan. Team healing dragons go well with karma to give karma more chances. That is true. I think any dragon that has shields, blocks, that sort of thing does pair quite well with healing for that reason. Um, but at the same time, it, it, the 500 orb dragons, for example, are just insanely overpowered. So, yeah. Could you help me understand the uh, resist within maze events? How long is it? 8 hours, 12 hours, 24. They are 8 hours long. And so you get three resets a day. So for instance, in the UK, it is now 8.25 p.m. 25 minutes ago, we got the reset on the runner event, which means that we could do more quests for runner. But in the maze event, we currently, because of daylight savings, get the reset timer an hour before that. So still at seven o'clock for us. Um, but then it would be, if your timer is at seven o'clock, then you could collect currency from say 7 p.m the next eight hours and then you'll get a new set of currency that you can collect after that eight hours and then it just repeats like that um so like you can only collect up to 600 currency per reset in maze events and you can do that just by feeding a dragon um or just doing other random tasks but it's every eight hours where you can collect 600 currency per reset Milium is a nice replacement for Prideful. In terms of use, God, no, but Milium is a babe. So if you want to use Milium, I highly suggest it. Where is my Milium babe? Let's say goodbye with Milium babe here because Milium is an absolute beast. I did a lot of time breeding with uh, <laughs> with soul dragons, which is why I have a four-starred Milium dragon. I could actually have a level 60 Milium if I wanted. Oh, oh, that's tempting, but it's not smart. <laughs> 
<laughs> it is not a smart choice. Milium is only an epic, which means it has lower stats than a lot of dragons. Um, primary element flame, which is really bad. Uh, it, it, Milium has a lot of problems, but Milium is a beautiful dragon, so why not, right? Would you say Corrupted Chaos is a good dragon to empower and use? Corrupted Chaos or Corrupted Legend are the best Corrupteds by far because their primary is great. Um, they are also the hardest to get because they are collection only dragons, but genuinely Corrupted Legend and Chaos, you could pick either of those. So pick the one that's going to fit into your endgame teams the best. There is better options, technically, but I mean, they are probably top... I would argue Corrupted Legends are like top 10 in the game. I really would. Like we've got the 500 Orb Dragons, Dual Perception. I think Corrupted Legend and Chaos are definitely up there. They are some of the best dragons in the game. There really aren't many other better, better picks at all that exist. Of course, we've just got Heroics in general, which are really good as well. But I would put the Corrupted Dragons a little bit higher than most dragons, personally. Is it possible to get the Duck Dragon without powered adds? Oh, you mean Platypus from the event? Um, it doesn't look like it. Um, it's looking like if you want to get your hands on Platypus, you're going to have to do all of the runner event, get the currency for the maze. You're going to have to do every maze event, and then we're going to have to hope for some lucky adds as well. Um, that is the way that we're going to get our hands on Platypus, unless they give us another way to earn stuff. But don't forget that we do also have quests which these quests don't give very much currency, but they do give currency, so you should still definitely be doing them. What do you think is better, Sinful or Deity? Ascended Deity? Um, I would say it depends on the team. I would say that Sinful is a lot easier to get. If you did manage to get Deity, you can use him, and I'd say in terms of their usage, they're roughly even. Deity is definitely a good pickup, though, for an Ascended. Out of all the Ascendeds, he's the only good one. <laughs> Apart from possibly has High Ascended Supreme, of course, but um, you could definitely look to use either of them. I'd say it depends on the elements you've got on your team, to be honest. You put your strongest dragons on the orbs habitat. Will it give me orbs of your dragons or random? It'll give you an orb for one of the dragons in there so what you can do is you can just put one of them in there if you want to guarantee specific orbs at the end of the month but that is what you would do you would just put your like if you don't mind getting orbs for sinful you would put them in there i would get rid of this dragon because we don't want him in there but any of these dragons like i'd normally move out prideful because i don't want to get orbs for him but any of the other dragons um apart from poseidon i don't know why poseidon's in there please poseidon get out of there uh, but any of the other dragons apart from Prideful in there, I wouldn't mind getting orbs for them. I'd probably put Jewel Perception in there, to be honest, if I was being optimal. Hex and Jewel? Um, I would have to look at all of their elements properly, rather than trying to think off the top of my head, honestly. I wouldn't be able to give you a response just immediately. No, you are cute studs, not me. Um, opinion on higher cult, is it a good late game dragon or would it be better to replace with Corrupted Chaos? Higher cult is still a very good dragon. Um, I think the, the, the difference is that obviously Corrupted, like Corrupted, ah, Corrupted Legend and Corrupted Chaos, they are legendary, so they do get different empower bonuses. Um, I would say I would put them roughly at the same level, personally. Um, although technically, because Hot is a, as in a Cult Titan, is a heroic, so they're technically stronger. Uh, but because of the empower bonuses that Legends get, they're roughly even in terms of how good they are. Um, I think you could use either of them. But you've got to remember that with Corrupted Legend and Chaos, you do have the Vampire Suck, which I think is a really nice skill to have. Um, but I think you could use either of them, to be honest. Genuinely, you could use either of them, and I think they would work. But depends on your team, <laughs> as always. Uh, what is Poseidon doing there? Uh, that, that was a moment. We don't, we don't think about that, okay? <laughs> don't worry about the Poseidon being there. Uh, all that happened was I obviously hatched him and just put him into any available habitat. That's that's what happened. <laughs> just don't question it, all right? 
Um, but yeah, I'll probably put Jeweled Perception in there before the end of the month and then we can get orbs for any of these dragons and I'll be a happy bunny. But like I said, I should probably go now and get some food done and my back hurts, so screw my back, I guess. But I'll keep doing this quest grinding. We'll do some more runner runs, but we got quite a few done today. So thank you for joining me and uh, helping me out in my runner grinding, making it slightly less annoying to do. And, you know, we only screwed up one, one run and that's because my finger had a spasm. So, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it any day. But... Thank you for joining me for this impromptu stream and uh, the VOD for this should go up soon anyway because I do this for all my uh, streams, they go up as VOD so that you can watch them later or if there's any particular advice from the beginning, at least you can watch it again. Um, he used to have his own element and habitat. <laughs> Strange. Anyway, 